Hey, welcome back to the Mr. Excel Netcast. We have another great dueling podcast for you this week. Uh, this is sent in by Steve, Steve from England. Steve has a series of estimates or forecasts going out here. And for each individual person, they might update their forecast repeatedly. And what Steve needs is a formula here in column B that's going to go out and grab the last value from that row. So in this case, it's grabbing from value from column E. Here it's going to grab from uh, column F. Here it's going to grab from column G and so on. And at, of course, as we add more estimates in, it should automatically go out and grab that last one. Well, I'm going to use a uh, function here called index. Now, the index function, uh, when I first read about it, wasn't sure exactly how I was ever going to use it. Um, equal index, we have to give it an array. An array can be, uh, you know, cells in a row, cells in a column, or cells in a rectangle. In this case, the array is going to be these cells right here um, in this row. I'm going to go out just in case they add more estimates later or something like that. And then it wants to know which row do you want and which column do you want. Well, row is easy because there's only one row in this array. So that's one, simple. And then which column? Okay, now here's where the tricky part is going to be. I'm going to put a dynamic value in here. Instead of saying that I want column three, I'm going to say that I want you to go out and count how many times an estimate appears in that range. So count how many things are there. So in this case, there's three entries in that array. It will give me the third value. Now I have to close the index function, uh, press enter, and we get 49050. Now here's the test. If we go out and add a new forecast, 55,000, bam, it instantly updates. So let's copy that down and do a little test here, 23,100. That looks good, 29,900. And because I was smart enough to go out a little bit further, someone adds some more estimates, uh, it continues to update. So that all looks good. All right, so that's the method I'd use. Let's see what Mike is going to come up with. Mike, turn it over to you. Hey, thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, I like that index solution. That was a pretty good one. The one I have here I think is not quite as good, but it is a common approach. I'm going to use the offset function. The offset function will allow us to have a starting position, and we'll see how many columns from the starting position we want to go over to retrieve the value. So here I'm going to use offset, and there's five arguments. We're going to use the first three only. The first one says reference, and it means, hey, where do you want to start? Where's the starting position? For us, it's B2. And then comma, rows says how many rows up or down do you want to go from B2? We don't want to go any, so you can put a zero, or you can just leave it blank and type a comma. We move to columns, and now columns. From B2, how many columns do you want to move over? Well, we need to move one, two, three, four to get that value and bring it back here. So I'm going to use the same count that uh, Mr. Excel did and get this whole range all the way out to, uh, to there. Now, a close parentheses on that, and then close parentheses on the offset, and that's it. Right now, it'll start at B2 and go out 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, get that value, and bring it back. So offset is retrieving a particular uh, value from a cell. I'm going to double click and send it down. Now, one problem with the offset is that it's a like the indirect function. It's a volatile function. So if you have a big spreadsheet, it's always recalculating when you whenever Excel recalculates, regardless if any data has changed in this range here. So uh, that's why I like the index more. Here's another problem, uh, both with the index and the offset here. If you if, if the person entering this data forgets and leaves uh, a blank here, notice it's retrieving the wrong value. Now, I want to show you a solution and this solution is from the Mr. Excel message board. If you haven't been to the Mr. Excel message board, you're missing Excel heaven. The smartest people in the world hang out there and this is a great solution. Now, I want to copy this sheet over. And the way you do that is I'm going to point to the sheet, hold control, click on the sheet and drag up. You notice that plus sign. That means it's copying it. I'm going to let go of the mouse, but not control. So I let go of the mouse, and boom, it copies it over. Now I'm going to come back over here and uh, put some value here. I don't remember what it was, just so we, we ret retain that. This offset and index works great if there are no blanks. But if there's blanks, oh, we're going to have some trouble. <coughs> Highlight. And here's the solution. We use the lookup. So lookup, and if we ask the lookup function, we give it a lookup value, and then ask it to look in this particular row right here. Well, if we give it a number that's too big, 
it automatically goes to the end. And when it can't find a number bigger than that, it'll just take the last one. And a one common approach at the Mr. Excel message boards is to actually put the biggest number that Excel knows, 9 point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it's 9.9 .9 with 14 nines there. And then we go E, scientific notation, plus 307. That's the biggest, biggest number that Excel knows. And then we simply can put this range in here all the way to the end. And close parentheses. Now, there's a couple advantages. And obviously, you don't have to put the biggest number in there. You can put any um, number. In fact, you could put the max function there if you want of this whole range. But uh, the advantage of this is it's going to pick up the blanks because it will always pick up the last one. And it's not volatile like the offset. And this number is a static number, so it's not ever calculating. So this is actually the fastest calculating of all of them. Control Enter, and then double click and send it down. And let's see if it works. So we got the 4-2. Let's see if we put in another uh, number here, 15. Sure enough, it got that 15, so it picked up. The only other method you might use if you want is to do the max equals max of all this if you didn't want to use that big number. So I have the max of that whole range in a cell down here. And then you could simply, uh, instead of using that big number, you could go ahead and highlight it and click there, F4. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. All right, uh, there you go. See you next trick. I am laughing out loud. Do you see how Mike gets me there? He starts out by saying, well, I have a solution that's not going to be as good as Mr. Excel's, and then starts into the whole offset thing. And about two minutes into his video, he then hits me with 9.99999 plus E plus 307. A trick for my own message board, uh, but clearly the best solution of them all. But he actually, he got me when he started out saying he was just going to use offset and then hits us with this amazing, amazing trick. For those of you keeping score, that's another one for Mike. Hey, I want to thank everyone, everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.